Now we're going to think about what you can do to support your child with ADHD in terms of their schooling. It's really important that you try to build a very strong, positive relationship with your school to support your child with ADHD. This matters a lot more than for other children because it may be that you and the special needs coordinator or the class teacher are having to discuss some difficult behaviour and if you don't get to know those people you won't feel that you can trust them with your child. The first thing to do after a diagnosis of ADHD is make an appointment to go and talk to the special needs coordinator or SENCO or the inclusion manager, they're called different things in different schools, and ask them what they will do for ADHD. So you want to know what are their usual processes for dealing with ADHD and what they do when behaviour of a child is difficult. Every school will have a behaviour policy which you should be able to find on their website, but you want to know what are the adjustments available for a child with ADHD. The reason that you're asking that is ADHD is a disability and people with disabilities are entitled to what are called reasonable adjustments to all sorts of processes and procedures. So this might mean that instead of being in detention for calling out in class, your child isn't in detention but they have another system for dealing with that for your child. So they have personal targets and they give the child feedback and they have a very positive system and they also provide them with some way to keep quiet whilst the teacher is talking. That's a reasonable adjustment for ADHD. One of the things that can sometimes happen is that children don't get their work done in class and then they're kept in at breaks. That's a really difficult situation for a child with ADHD and is likely to lead to them having more difficulty rather than less difficulty because they haven't been able to run around and have a change of scene. Try to make sure the school understands that and they will find other ways for the child to get their work done. You will know your child very well indeed and you will also have their history of being with other teachers in your head. So you may be able to provide a list to the new teacher of your child's difficulties, what you find helps, what other teachers have found helps, and give it both to the teacher and the teaching assistant for that class. I would also make sure there's a copy that stays on your child's file and that is given to new teachers like supply teachers or other lesson teachers so that they all know the kind of things that can support your child well. And what you're trying to emphasise is what works. Think very carefully about homework. Most schools will have a system for doing homework. Sometimes that homework will be great for your child. Sometimes it will be something that's difficult. And remember that ADHD means that when you have to put in more effort because you're not interested in what you're doing, it's very difficult to do. It's not that your child is lazy or doesn't understand the importance of whatever the homework might be. It's that it's hard for them to do it. So ideally, I would suggest that you get your child enrolled in a school homework club. So you're not having to teach them. You're not having to supervise their homework getting done. And they've got the expert help of a teacher. If you're running into repeated problems with homework, ask for another appointment with a special needs coordinator. Whatever you do, don't do your child's homework for them because that gives a misleading idea of what your child is capable of without help. We're just going to make sure you know what supports are available from the school system. So the school will decide who needs to see their special needs coordinator for any kind of internal assessment. However, you can ask for a meeting with the SENCO at any point. And the SENCO's job is to draw up a plan that supports your child. In Coventry, there is something called My Support Plan, 
but Warwickshire have a similar kind of thing. So they all have a format they can use to write a support plan on and you should always get a copy of that plan. The SENCO's job is to make sure that teachers understand what the strategies are to be used and that they monitor progress. So there should be repeated meetings for you to hear how the plan is working and whether it's addressing problems that your child has. The school can invite in support to help your child. Now this is up to them whether they do access these services or not and they have to pay for them, they're not free. They are within the system though so you need to know about them. So there are specialist teachers who specialise in social, emotional and mental health support to children and their job is to come in, provide an assessment and a report and advise the school staff of strategies and methods they can use to support the child better. The school will only invite these people in if their own strategies haven't been found to work very well. When they come and they do their assessment, they may or may not want to talk to you. What you should have, though, is an outcome of that assessment. So you should be able to find out what they recommended and how that's going to be monitored and make sure that you're involved in any meetings to monitor progress. If those strategies don't work sufficiently, the next step is to invite an educational psychologist into school to provide a highly specialist assessment of their learning and behaviour. This is only done for a minority of children and it's done when the other strategies haven't worked well enough and it's clear that the school have been using strategies for quite some time, adjusted them and not managed to get them working well for this child. So really they have a question for the psychologist which is why aren't these things working with this child and is there something else we can try? The educational psychologist will usually want to see you as part of that assessment because it's very important that they understand the bigger picture of the child and any stresses and strains there are at home. Where schools have been using strategies for some time and it isn't working at all or where the child's needs are very extreme, they have the option to request an EHC assessment. That's an education, health and care assessment, which means all of those services will contribute to it. All organisations have a way of doing this that is relevant to that local authority. So Coventry and Warwickshire are slightly different. But the general way it works is that the school can request an assessment and in order to do that they have to prove they've already been spending considerable money on the child's support. If they haven't been spending any money on extra support they won't be able to have a request agreed for an assessment. Only a small percentage of the total child population will ever need an assessment like this. So the majority won't ever get to this stage. If they do get to this stage of having an assessment, they may well end up with what's called an Education, Health and Care Plan, an EHCP. That's a very detailed plan and it leads to some additional support being provided to the child via a school. Wherever possible, that child will stay in the school that they're in. However, for some children, they do need to move to a different kind of school or unit provision, which gives them the extra support they need. Those are special schools or special provisions, and they're only accessed by an EHCP, which details a level of support which is too extreme for a mainstream setting to provide. So you can see the summary of that, which is that there are a number of supports available, but these supports are accessed through the school. Parents can't ask for them themselves very easily. 
but they can go and have a discussion with the Senko and say, what is it that you're doing with my child and how will it progress and what if it doesn't work? The Senkos will know the system and they know how to make the requests for an EHC if it's needed or how to get an educational psychologist in. So they will be able to talk to you about that. What they won't be able to do is answer every query, so there are also some supports for parents. Both local authorities for Coventry and Warwickshire have a system for providing parents with support and information about special educational needs. These organisations are called SENDIAS. What they do is provide information directly to parents so they're independent of the local authority. They're a great help because they help parents to understand the system, to get their paperwork done for their parts within the system and they can be very supportive in meetings. Remember that there's plenty of other resources you can find on the Neurodevelopmental Services page on the RISE website. We've also got a Facebook page where we regularly post things for parents and carers. You can also use the Dimensions tool to create a profile for your own child and find self-help resources that are going to be relevant to the kind of difficulties they have. Thanks for listening.